We have broken 300 subscribers, ladies and gentlemen. Thanks to you, dear viewer. Thanks to you. So, huge shout out to everybody who is just watching, subscribing, retweeting, commenting, everything in our digital salon. This pirate ship of the mind that we are embarking on here. Artist Journal, November 23rd, 2022, Berlin. My name is Adrian Pocabelli. Welcome back. And I am a late out of the gate here today. And look at how many tabs we have to get through. So fasten your seatbelts. It's going to be a fascinating journey, uh, hopefully as ever. And so here we go. This was retweeted via Sabato. So credit to him on the retweet. And this is by, though, Numinal. I love plotting and painting so darn much. And look at this fantastic contrast, combining pen plotting, and pen plotting again is the pen on the machine. And I'm gonna show you an awesome image of it in an image of it in action from Numinal. But look at this. I mean, what a great contrast here. Hey, of this kind of brushwork, looks like made with a hand, with these kind of really straight lines. Uh, you know, again, it's like the contrast of the precision of a machine with the kind of randomness that a machine would never make, at least so I think, you know, at least not now. So anyways, uh, cool work from Numinal. Next, uh, let's take a look at the pen plotter in action. So Numinal also posted this. And let's just see here, let me get some volume for extra effect. So look at how cool this is. Uh, and you know, we, al we almost see that Sigmar Polka kind of style too of putting the randomness underneath and then you put something completely unrelated in a sense over top and that great contrast, instant poetry that we've been describing. Uh, so there's that I want to point out and I also want to point out the alchemical transformation that occurs, so you see these are like digital squares, likely made in a Photoshop or some other program. And what happens is when you go into the physical world, you start getting weird things like the bleed on the corner, too much ink, right? And this kind of randomness creates a whole other kind of work, right? So again, I, I call it an alchemical transformation that occurs when you go travel through the mediums and sometimes just Changing the scale is another way of doing that. Uh, it's as well when you go through the mediums. That'll, that's, you know, you do a little graphite pencil and then you blow it up and then you screen print it. It's, it's a completely different thing. So anyways, fascinating from Numinal. Thank you for showing this. I, I mean, who doesn't want to find a pen plotter immediately after seeing this video, right? What digital artist doesn't want to run over and get a pen plotter? Big shout out to mech.txt one of our favorite uh, pixel artists who we love to show here for picking up a couple of the 8-bit nature series. So nothing like, you know, a great pixel artist picking up some of your pixel artwork. That's exciting. So Wheatfield and Storm, gone to mech.txt. Thank you. Big shout out to you. And a massive shout out to Islay for picking up this one-of-one -one remix of Raphael Madonna. Again, part of the Related Images series. And this went for 30, so thank you, Ilay, and thank you for everything you do, Ilay. You do the timestamps there. And, you know, if you miss days or if you just have to stop doing it, I totally understand. I mean, nobody is getting paid here. So, I mean, big shout. So give Ilay a follow if you like the show, basically, because she is really helping it grow. It's probably why it grew to th over 300 subscribers so quickly. Uh, to me, it was kind of ahead of schedule. As fast as this show actually has been growing. We started with about the 30 subscribers I had for the last 10 years. And in three months, you know, we're making really nice growth. So thank you, Ile, for everything you do. And this is hilarious. Tele-NFT. They put out like a teletext. Thank you for the mention. So super hilarious. Uh, my pleasure. Thank you for the hilarious thank you. Uh, that was hilarious. Uh, and we also heard from Uzipus who also was working with the teletext. Remember the cat from yesterday, the pixelated cat with the strip on the side of the black? And I thought, oh, I kind of like that. It kind of makes it feel like art, you know, when you have these irrational elements put in. 
And so Usipus actually has an expl explanation. The margin at the right side of the white cat is because this area holds the colorless black line commands to color the rest. We use the authentic teletext format that TV stations use. Use. Some tele-NFT works are actually broadcasted now, so how cool is that? Kind of like a real-world installation. This isn't an installation stuck in some gallery. This is being broadcast through the, I guess, radio waves or airwaves. So how cool is that? They're actually broadcasting some of these teletext works. If I understand Usipus right, Dana Ulama, uh, they're great, uh, what I was calling future wave or cyberpunk uh, artist, uh, chimed in on the, ter ter on the terminology, which is fascinating, actually, a very interesting discussion. Thank you for the feature. And at 1220, I would say a good term for Gal Barkin's work would be solar punk, a term I've never heard before. Uh, it's futuristic, but not dystopian, like cyberpunk. So I guess cyberpunk is what Dana Ulama probably would call her work. I mean, Atmos's work, I think we could call cyberpunk. Also, I wasn't inspired by any particular subway, but lived in Berlin for six years, so I guess it was subconscious. Yeah, I saw the ooh, the U here on top of the thing, and it just screamed Uban. And so hilarious. So very interesting. Now, let's just, I brought up Gal Barkin's work here. So you see, it's kind of like, uh, as she said, it's not dystopian. It's actually kind of, so solar punk, so kind of sunny cyberpunk. So I guess the, I guess I would have thought cyberpunk as well, but I thought that was a 1980s term, but then I rethought about it and I thought, you know, maybe it makes sense to call these works cyberpunk. Like I thought a neuro neuromancer and again, the eighties and like that kind of whole thing, but maybe it still exists like in the form of, you know, what's that movie, the Blade Runner, you know, like, I guess that's cyberpunk. I get, you know, so the question is, is do, is cyberpunk, you know, something that we relegate to a certain decade, i.e. the 1980s, maybe the early nineties, or is it something that we, a term that we use that transcends the decades and really it's just about human, humanity's relationship to technology and maybe there's a slight dystopian uh, quality to it and that is cyberpunk. Interesting, you know, so the conversation evolves here. So solar punk is positive cyberpunk. And here are examples from Gal Barkin who we looked at yesterday I'm going to kill that. And finally, we have a comment from Uxine from a couple of days ago that we missed yesterday. There, Mr. Pokebelly, there I was trying to replicate the glitch with screen print using pressured water on a newly coated fresh screen, then drying it. So let me show you what Uxine is talking about. We looked at this piece a couple of days ago. And I was trying to figure out, like, is this brushwork? And then you take a photo, you make it big, and then you put it on a screen and screen print. What Uxine is saying he did, and I actually brought up here, uh, I brought up some screens, okay? So this is a screen uh, when you're screen printing and you see I did the screen print here, you put it on top and you squeegee the color across. So traditionally, the way a screen print works is you make your stencil black on white on a piece of paper, then you put like canola oil on top and the paper retains its structure, but what it does is it makes the white part see-through. Then you put it into this vacuum sealed device with a glass case, you lower it and you seal it, and then a, you put a curtain and then a light comes on. And basically what's going on, you see wherever there's black, it protects this photosensitive layer that you put on, this green photo, it's, so that is photosensitive and you put that on first in order to make your stencil. So you see everywhere where there's black that was hidden from the light uh, is removed. So basically what happens is the light congeals the green and makes it your stencil. Okay, so what Uxine did is put the green layer on and before it dried, before the light did anything, sprayed it, put a spray which created this right here and then let the light finish the job and then was left with this stencil here. Okay, so kind of a glitchy way of creating a mark making and then proceeded to screen print. So that's what was going on over there. Thank you for the comment, Uxine. Uh, fascinating, very cool.
experimentation. Excited to see where the physical works go. That will be fascinating. Uh, so on the on the uh, Polygon Instagram front, Runetune, Runetune had a very uh, accurate comment, is how I'd put it. Instagram needs to make some adjustments if they expect to be competitive with Twitter. For starters, they don't accept GIF files. Great point. And they force you into some pretty dumb image dimensions. Another great point. Absolutely. For the file types, they do accept. I would be for all I would all be for Instagram taking the lead on Polygon NFTs, but there are too many restrictions around censorship, file types, and presentation. That is image dimensions and max 10 images per post. So a systematic dismantling of why Instagram is not an ideal platform for NFT production. Uh, you just, yeah, itemized it beautifully. I couldn't agree more. Uh, I could have written that. I feel like I, yeah, I am in complete agreement with you on that. So excellent comment there, Arun Toon, on the, the challenges of Instagram. Now, however, I did a quick news search just out of curiosity. Instagram is minting its own NFT marketplace, and they interviewed Alexandra Edmonds, who I believe is with Instagram. And this is the takeaway. Uh, the ability not just to display NFTs, but to mint and sell them via Instagram. So... You can see where Instagram wants to go with this. When you are putting your image on Instagram, they want you to be able to go, oh, if you have a MetaMask or if you somehow maybe their wallet, whatever the case is, you can just hit mint and turn into a collectible. And then with that, we can buy and sell. So NFTs and Instagram, kind of a match made in heaven. Let's see if they do it. But again, to uh, it would be nice if they included gifts. You know, uh, so to Runetune's point. So interesting. And just on this whole kind of discussion with Polygon, and again, it's not like my most excited, you know, blockchain to think about, particularly as an artist, but we have to pay attention here. And maybe we want to be early if this actually does seem like a feasible, good idea. So Mando put out this tweet, Polygon and YouTube partnership might be announced today. So I don't think this materialized. Otherwise, I think we would have heard about it, and I think it would have been everywhere on Twitter. But, you know, just this idea and the fact that this is a rumor, it's a pretty cool idea. YouTube and Polygon, how would that work, right? Very, very interesting things in the works here. And big shout out to NSF World, who put out an FX hash. We are collaborating a little bit behind the scenes on potential merch. Uh, don't want to, like take that further than it is, but we're just kind of fooling around and trying stuff out and seeing if we can come up with anything. So big shout out to NSF World with this very nice piece that Mikey de la Creme got from the Gorefeld and Friends FX hash. You see the die with the most likes, uh, roast beef in the background, the creme de la creme hat. The, you know, he got the, as, as Mikey de la Creme said, pretty sure I just minted the perfect Gorefeld and Friends. And so if you want to help out NSF world, uh, just go to uh, FX hash and you can find Gorefeld and friends and they're minting for two Tezos each. And this is a collaboration with Purple Drank, by the way. Big shout out to Bazaya, who is finally on Super Rare. Uh, that makes me happy and I'm just thrilled for you. And he wants to give a huge thanks to Xerox NFT and Chriso Stoich for onboarding me. It would be nice to get Rat Cloaksy on too, wouldn't it? Uh, so anyway, I don't know how you make that happen, but that would be, wouldn't that be epic? Because he's someone who I think could do also very fabulous. Speaking of cross-chain, MimoCat is minting on Foundation, a Genesis on Foundation. So that is going to be fascinating because MimoCat has her collectors and it's going to be very interesting to see how that turns out on Ethereum. So fascinating. More just traveling through the mediums here. Bug Slayer Betty, uh, and she is printing, at work printing DOS trash bird stickers for everyone, max capacity, Empress Trash. So look at how good this looks. This looks like, I'd guess, A5, which is two A4s. Uh, if you take an A4 and you fold it, you'll get two A5s. And then if you want A6, you fold it again. Uh, so this looks like, uh, I would, this, yeah, because you put two of these together, it looks like an A4. So these look like A5 stickers. They look pretty good, don't they? So just more interesting traveling through the mediums. 
Luis Ponce, who I think we looked at yesterday or the day before, who had the crazy prices, well, maybe this is why, looks like he's doing something with Christie's. Bro, LP at Christie's Inc. feels good, man. So we see a, what looks like an ASCII Pepe. So pretty interesting over there. Uh, and look at this, this beautiful, my favorite part is the water here, this beautiful Rata work in progress, a ship going down. And look at the detail on all of this and the color on all of this. So very, always exciting to see Rata pixel work like this. Some of my favorite pixel art, for sure, I'm sure for a lot of people, are these, you know, Rata works, the Degenesance, if you've ever seen that one. We'll have to bring those up in a future episode. My first NFT that I, like, one of the first I bought was the, uh, I think it was Cosmo de Medici on the horse on Tezos. That was one of my first Tezos NFTs. Uh, anyway, continuing on, Gabby Walter, with a work in progress as well on a commission, so again, just love to see the works in progress. And here looks sculpting, maybe using Blender or something. Really cool. So adding some range uh, with some sculpting. You know, I assume once you get these worked out in these programs that you can uh, 3D print these things too. So, you know, FYI. And speaking of Gabby Walter, Holy Rats uh, is minting on Arthropo. So if you want a... Gabby Walter on Ethereum, go to mint.arthropo.xyz. And moving into our images here, Delirious Digitis was happy to be on Artist Journal and mentioned a few people. So here is Delirious Digitis. Now, I think we were on this yesterday and we saw this, but there's a new work here and we missed this other work here. Uh, again, we can't show everything, but here's a nice work by Ove. So, you know, just a pretty interesting illustration here with what looks like mushrooms and a cup and just all sorts of interesting. This looks like a larvae, a sun, you know, pretty cool. And also Amanda Hommum, we missed this work. So kind of a Windows 95, you know, you got the folder up here, you got the window over here <clears throat> with some sort of you know, the, what would you call this palette? Like, uh, not a uh, neon, but you'd almost call it like creams or whatever, some kind of palette. I don't know. The word escapes me right now. Continuing on analog video GIF number 192 by Klaus.tez. Seemed to fit nicely with those works here. Kind of animated abstract meets glitch. Is how I'd describe this very interesting, uh, this very interesting uh, artwork here. Buy for three ninety nine, edition of seven, so pretty reasonably priced. LB with a new work, Path to the Eternal Gloom. Again, kind of abstract meets glitch. So very nice, and you know, pretty recognizably LB, which is always a good thing too. Buy for five, edition of fifteen. And what else do we have here? We have Haiti Rocket and this similar color scheme, interestingly. And I think this is like a big skull, like a big pet ski skull. And it looks like it's moving downwards. So anyways, always cool and interesting from Haiti Rocket. Okay, okay. Buy for 37, edition of seven. Glitchtown Arcade. And here is another innovation on the glitch on the Nintendo Glitch ROM. And this looks like almost like a TV show, like a big TV here, right in the middle. The announcer, your favorite dose of nostalgia. And then we see works all across at the, all around. So pretty fun, pretty interesting. And like an old school TV, Glitchtown Arcade, your favorite dose of nostalgia in one click. And there's the website actually, we'll have to check that out. Uh, continuing on, Kurt Hustle Collective, sellout. And there you go, a one of one from KHC uh, for only 52. And it looks like KHC is playing a little bit with these, there's another work here, playing with these kind of pixel filters. These, I almost want to call it like a bitmap or a pattern filter, that kind of one bit on and off filter as looks like it's using multiply on top, a black and white multiply on top. Who knows what they're doing, but just, just uh, you know, Taking a look here at the technical issues, 
Brendon Burger, Don That Burger. So again, classic sort of always keeping you guessing over here. And here's a work by Ellie Lowe. Let's see if we can... So, more mysterious trash art. More mysterious trash art from Ellie Lowe. Uh, always interesting, always cool. You see, like they started... Uh, minting yeah see these go for 80 cents but they go right away and there's and then you know people start offering more right away so the flippers love it and the collectors obviously love it again it has a real gallery feel to it or museum frankly uh, Uxin with a very interesting work here delusion again a lot of flashing images across this entire episode be warned uh, so what do we have here a retro looking monitor with almost like a VHS or a game uh, console here with LFG. Everything is scripted. Delusion, which looks like an Amazon logo. High anxiety with a half a McDonald's logo. A low life, a skull, and a little homunculi, I think you'd call it. You know, in Gulliver's Travels and all the little, I think you call those homunculi, all the little guys tie them down, tie down Gulliver, and a sad face. So with that beautiful matte black that we love, nice piece by Uxine. I think it sold out like in 10 minutes. So went for sale at 306, sold out like within 10 minutes at 15 a piece. So pretty nice business there. 300 Tezos. Very nice, Uxine. Very nice. Board Me Social Club with a new work. And this is kind of a mysterious work because you see these... Like, first of all, it looks like some strip mall, beefy, and then this kind of scary looking uh, wrestler figure. And you see the belt here that's kind of off. What's the weirdest part for me is this layer here that at first it looks like tattoos, but then it's over top of the shirt. And then you're thinking, is the shirt see-through? Not sure what's going on, So, but interesting. Edition of five and not sold. Maybe, I wonder if... Yeah, so who knows what's going on there. But anyway, interesting new work from Board Me Social Club. Daniel W., I missed this work last week, but I want to touch on it because it was really interesting, just from a compositional point of view and just everything. So you see an empty room and the plugins, uh, interesting colors, you know, kind of two colors, three colors, I guess. You got the light switch. And then you go through the room, and at the back, you see this monster figure. And up here, you have the light, but you know the, you don't see it. The first time I looked at this, I didn't even see the monster figure. So interesting, right? Uh, buy for eight. Kind of reminds me of the weird and terrifying, but its own kind of vibe. So this is an uh, experimental series. Timothy Julien with a very nice work here. A very, very nice work. So dividing up the picture plane, uh, this kind of staircase, but totally, you know, taking interesting liberties like we see with this brown here. You'd think there would be a line here, but they got rid of it. Maybe it's just a wall, I guess, but still uh, just filling in the gaps, you know, of this line drawing with different patterns. And I just love what they did here, showing almost the brushwork with contrast, which contrasts beautifully with these solid panes here and almost the Bende dots over here. Again, a bit of a Lichtenstein feel, but totally their own thing. I even like how they do this little frame here. And you see it's like a, it's actually a very light gray and a lighter white over top. So I miss this. Mercury, mysterious title. Continuing on, a abstract work, Inception by artist Jank. And let's just take a look as we look at our digital abstract works here. Sorry, the sun has decided to Sun is playing games with me this morning, as usual. Uh, so anyways, interesting work. This is on super rare. Jank, someone new, experimenting with abstra abstraction. And here's some generative art uh, made on FX Hash. And this is made by Landlines Art Generative. So just more kind of interesting experimentation. It looks like these would make really nice prints. Also curious about the pen plotter on that one. And look, you look at the different colored backgrounds. 
So anyways, super interesting. Uh, yeah, so this is their, all, you see all sorts of experimentation on their object profile page, putting some lines together to generate unique one of one works. So very interesting. And here's, I was tempted to see this as more generative art, but I'm actually not sure. This is from a series called The Distant Sea, Nazare, Portugal, and they look at different coasts. And I thought this was stunning. Again, it's tempting to see this as, you know, computer generated because there's so much line work, right? And you see different like Indonesia, Big Sur, California. So Skorzeny, Lines, Geometry, and Nature. Pretty interesting work. And here's another work that, again, kind of combining geometry and what looks like generative art, but I'm not sure. Beautiful contrast here between just simple abstraction and this botanical, organic, curvilinear structures here, right? Again, that huge contrast, these empty rectilinear cubes contrasting with organic nature. Called Babylon, nice title. This was released about a week ago, missed this one as well, for R.I.P. Han. Uh, as we go into AI, and this is Rob V too with an interesting uh, statement as he continues to explore AI. As I'm moving through this phase of work, I'm really digging the bridge between the surreal and photorealism that AI can achieve if you mold it right. The delicate balance in between can give you almost photographic results, yet retain the beauty that surrealism invokes. And that is almost what Dali was doing, was these photorealistic dream images. So you see how AI and surrealism just go hand in hand. And so let's take a look at some AI. So new work from Venta, which I thought is making very stunning work here. And just the body abstracted somewhat, isn't it? And you got these different legs and almost like you'd see like eight fingers sometimes. Now you're seeing like seven legs, almost like a rat cloak see there. Their pernicious picnic. And you know who this reminded me of? Speaking of Dali, it screamed the, what is this called? Aut autumnal cannibalism. And it just kind of screamed Salvador Dali to Rob V2's point. Okay. So, you know, you see the similarities here, just these biomorphic figures here. And here are some more. Lean on me, Venta times AI. And so it's really interesting to see artists like Robness V2 and Venta, you know, explore AI. And also they have this whole other series of work. And I think, you know, that's probably going to be true for many of us as we go down the AI rabbit hole. But I don't think we should take too long either. Uh, you know, and so, yeah, like, I mean, already on the same page, you can see like earlier work by Venta and you see this progression that has occurred and it's fascinating to watch. Another great reason why object is such a good discovery tool. It's interesting how, you know, this notification business, why does OpenSea not have notifications on artists? Superware does, but I don't know what OpenSea is doing, not putting notifications. I want notifications. I have to go to object. It's even like object could go multi-chain because the platform is brilliant. Here's new work by Kika Nicolela some AI work. So just, she's been making these really interesting still, still lifes. <laughs> My mom said, it's not still lives, it's still lifes. She's been making great still lifes here. Composition number 22. So you see a parrot and, you know, again, very realistically done. So this is Kika Nicolela, who has actually collected some of my work before. So big shout out to Kika and Another, a new artist that I hadn't discovered, but Clown Vamp uh, collected, Moe P. Wellington. And this is some very nice AI art, isn't it? So, you know, just very nice, kind of like a bit of an impressionist feel to it. Moe P. Wellington, artist, collector, and tea connoisseur. So, yeah, you kind of get that tea connoisseur feeling. And here's another one. And this was collected, I think, by Artie Hands who is also a big AI collector. And so it's interesting, even I think, cause I'm surprised to see Artie Hands, but maybe he's been, I think he's been collecting for a long time on Tezos. But what I was thinking, the thought that that provoked, cause I see the, uh, the punk as the, uh, 
as the uh, you see the punk here, the crypto punk as the uh, avatar. And I was thinking I could see a lot of ETH collectors coming over to Tezos just for the AI experimentation. You know, so here's another beautiful work picked up by Artie Hands. Uh, so Mo P. Wellington, a new artist to keep track of here. Richard Nadler, collector and artist now on Super Rare, with some more beautiful experimentation in AI. And look at this, back to the photorealistic theme. Here is Alessio La Greca. Like, look at some of these pieces here, the detail. So I think this is Midjourney V4. So it's looking very nice, Alessio. Like, and look, starting to sell, very nice. So, and you see the development too, the evolution here. So this is all happening very, very, very quickly. So you could be next if you start experimenting and putting a few hours into Midjourney V4. Here's another artist, Hallie X, who I don't think we've looked at. Nature times art times technology. And so you see almost a bit of a Charles AI feel to it with the mattedness. And we saw that with Delta Sauce, Charles AI, and now we have here uh, Hallie X. And I'm kind of always back to this idea of how much is the AI, how much are the artists the tools of the AI, right? Uh, you know, how much does the AI want to make certain kind of work? This is beautiful. Uh, and the, the artists are really just helping the AI resolve certain things that the technology wants to do. Very cool, eh? Okay? Uh, so kind of a, the light is really nice too in the painting, in this AI painting, HS number 34, in a collection called Hyperspace. Very cool. Uh, hyperspace number 26. Buy for two Tezos, so available pretty cheap. Let's see how many editions here. Uh, only six editions. So here's a bit of a kind of, you know, not well-known artist here. I suspect, and again, you almost get like that interior-exterior combination, but not quite. These are more just interiors that have been reshuffled. And here we go, again, Charles AI, indoor eruption. So you see, you can see directly here, Charles AI is consciously putting the outdoor in an indoor setting or the indoor in an outdoor setting. We saw that a little bit with Delta Sauce too. So. And to me, this is just kind of a big metaphor for, frankly, this entire scene right now, this Cambrian explosion, I call it. Uh, here's another work, otherfaces.tez. So again, you see almost that photorealistic AI. Look at how much AI is in this episode. And we are almost done. And here's another AI piece by 0009, which veers towards more physical looking art. Fun exploration in stable diffusion. And this is called off-brand. So just another interesting piece. And here's an actual painting. This is by Naked Galena, who I've never seen before. What did you do last summer? Original artwork is oil on paper. And this is a digital, digital copy of an analog artwork. Let's just expand that. Pretty nice painting though. So I had to include it here. Just an original and it looks like underwater. Like this would look great in a gallery. And again, couldn't you just see the digital marketplace being the place for these selling? It's almost like object needs tools for like shipping and kind of guaranteeing as a buyer, you're gonna feel okay about buying that physical art. But I think there's, you know, cause right now you give them the Tezos and you pray that they're gonna send you the art. And of course, 99% of the time they're gonna do that. Um, but imagine if they had just a little bit more infrastructure to facilitate physical sales, the potential of that because this is too easy. This is not like Sachi art, right? And then they just take their 2% or maybe they make it 5% for physical works. Del Cante draws. A physical work is an NFT. Dress for the nose you want, not the one you have. What is this called? It sounded like, yeah, rhinoplasty in Alaska. You have choices. Uh, so yeah, kind of reminiscent of, there's a Ballard, a uh, short story at the end of the Atrocity Exhibition, Prince Margaret's Rhinoplasty. Very interesting work. Is that pastiche? What he does is he takes a surgical uh, medical textbook and replaces the, the patient with, I think it was Princess Margaret. And so this nose job operation, this rhinoplasty, you see in the, uh, it's totally transformed by using a celebrity instead of the patient. And that was the work. 
very interesting surrealist work. So here's a nice piece by Del Cante Draws, who is very consistently awesome. And a work by Santiago, another ink drawing. See, you can't stop me. So beautiful work. That's why I added it here. A nice physical drawing by Santiago. And look at this. We looked at this about a couple of weeks ago. Diego just gone sold out by Walk. I guess the World Cup might not have hurt. And it's a fantastic piece, though, and sold for 0.35 ETH. So, and that, I believe, was for the physical work that will be sent to the collector. That, my friends, is your episode. Thank you once again for joining me. Until next time, take care. <laughs>